Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick note to start with here. I did quite a bit of work today to update some of our Honeypot scripts and the install procedures and such. We had some issues lately with some of the most recent versions of Ubuntu that didn't install quite properly. If you had issues installing it, if one of the components isn't running correctly, then uh, give it a chance. Uh, try an update of the Honeypot. Try a reinstall and hopefully it will uh, fix any issues you had. If you still have issues... We do now have a bit more expanded sort of troubleshooting instructions. So maybe we can nail down some of the problems we still run into. In particular, if you have the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, that has some problems with some of the dependencies. Try to run the 64-bit version, which should work on the later, like the Raspberry Pi 4 models. And sadly, malicious advertisements are still a problem on uh, Google. Uh, Google had a malicious advertisement running that impersonated KeePass, the free and open source uh, password manager. When you just searched for the keyword KeePass, this malicious ad was the first ad to show up, according to Malwarebytes, and it used to display to the user the legitimate keypass.info domain. But what you display to the user can be very different from the actual link that you're then ending up at when you're clicking on the link. That's sort of a feature of uh, these Google advertisements. They actually did use a lookalike domain name that used an international uh, character, one of those IDN characters. The K in keypass was a K with a little dot underneath. Not sure uh, what language uh, that is uh, from, but uh, looks uh, pretty uh, convincing. And interestingly, even Google Chrome that often like switches back to Punicode in these cases does uh, display this uh, character. The software being offered by the malicious website, of course, was not a key pass. It was a downloader that then once the victim contacted the command control server, downloaded uh, whatever uh, malware it was instructed to uh, download. At this point, the keypass.info domain is the fake one, is uh, still open and available, but is blocked by Google Safe Browsing. The ad appears to be gone, at least uh, I haven't been able to reproduce it uh, right now. And sticking with Google here for a second story, malicious apps in the Google Play Store, of course, have always been sort of an issue. And uh, one of the ways how Google is fighting that is this service they're calling Google Play Protect. Now, this looks a little bit different than what Apple sort of does. Apple, of course, does some review before the application are being added uh, to their app store. Google does a similar review, I understand more automatic, but uh, Google Play Protect actually does some scanning on the device as the user installs the app and they're improving this now in particular they're extending this beyond the google play store so if a user is downloading an app from some third party app store google play protect on the device will scan the application it may as they point out in a blog post then also send some signals uh, which i guess are code snippets from the app uh, to the Google Play Protect uh, backend, which is basically then Google, and uh, they will then do some analysis on this to find potentially harmful applications. One of Apple's arguments against sort of opening up themselves uh, to third-party app stores has always been that they can't really review any apps that go into these app stores. So Google's approach here of actually scanning on the user device uh, may offer some workaround here. Of course, that's kind of what your traditional sort of anti-malware typically does on endpoints like, you know, outside of the mobile world. And we are Prying Krebs. We have an interesting new twist on the fake browser 
Update scam. It comes from Guardio Labs. Two researchers published details about the scam. Now, fake browser updates are nothing really all that terribly exciting. I've seen them for a while where a compromised website is being used to basically trick users into installing a fake browser by claiming that they need an update. Well, uh, what's sort of a little bit different here is how the code is then being hosted. So the attacker is is injecting some JavaScript into the um, vulnerable page. And then this JavaScript actually retrieves the additional malicious JavaScript code from a Binance blockchain. They're essentially just putting in a smart contract that contains the JavaScript and they're pulling the JavaScript in from that smart contract and then just executing it via eval. The tricky part here, of course, is that this makes it quite difficult to actually remove the malicious code because after all, the blockchain cannot easily be altered. So I guess uh, someone has finally found sort of a good application of smart contracts. And as I mentioned, I think yesterday, whenever you offer a way to sort of host free files on the internet, it will be abused by malware downloaders. Well, that's it for today. I had one more story about uh, some Rowhammer variant that flips bits that yet again bypasses other defenses, but really not that terribly important. So, well, uh, that's it for today. Have a good weekend and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.